The latest projections from the Social Security Trustees Program combined funds may run out in 2034, at which 80% of benefits will be payable. And the fund used to pay retirement benefits may run out even sooner in 10 years, at which point 77% of benefits will actually be payable as well. And during a Senate hearing, the SSA Chief Secretary stated that Social Security is a pay-as-you-go program, and up to 160 grand earnings are subject to payable taxes. In 1983, when major bills were enacted to shore up Social Security trust funds, 90% of uncovered benefits fell below the terrible maximum. And since then, it has remained above that lame same level. And even the Senate Budget Committee Chairman has touted this bill which is called the Medicare and Social Security Fair Share Act. It would require wages above 400 grand to be taxed for Social Security. Other Democrats also support the idea of making high earners pay a large sum into the program. Representative Larson and the Senators introduced the Social Security 2100 Act Bill with more than 200 Democratic co-sponsors. Calling for applying Social Security payroll taxes to incomes of over 200 grand while also having the wealthy pay taxes on the businesses and income investments as well. Polls have shown that raising Social Security payroll tax is a popular topic with the public. Yet the recent Senate hearing, some leaders and experts question whether what is the right approach to help people out with their American stimulus cash. But so far, Democrats' proposals would actually push the marginal tax rate to over 50%, and many would break Joe Biden's promise not to raise taxes on anyone making less than 400 grand. Even Grassley argued this. The next cost of an increase for Social Security recipients is projected to be slightly better than previously estimated, but still the lowest in years. The Senior Citizens League predicts that, and also they have estimated that in mid-June 2024, COLAs could be somewhere around 2.7%, a huge drop-off from 2023, 8.7% increase. And the latest slightly larger estimate comes despite cooling inflation. By Senators Warnock and Budd halting the harassment of our service members by debt collectors. I hope this will also enjoy broad support. <clears throat> and last night, we sent an outline with a number of additional amendments. I'm hopeful we can lock in an agreement soon to begin voting on some of them. Since last Wednesday, the Senate has voted on eight amendments here on the floor, adopted seven more by voice vote. This is how the process should work. Which generally has the opposite effect on social asset. And now in Maine, all recipients of the SNAP program will have their monthly benefits delivered to them by today. SNAP benefits are distributed to eligible residents from the 10th to the 14th of every month, with all beneficiaries scheduled to have their benefits by the month of July by Friday. Now, the next round of SNAP payments will also begin on August 10th. The state of Texas will complete issuing SNAP benefits worth up to $1,700 for a month of July this week. Texas has a long window for issuing payments, lasting through the first 10 days in a month. Even the amount received depends on one family size. A single household will receive 281 and an eight-member household will receive 1700 But on a federal level, some House representatives want to expand the number of food stamp recipients subject to work requirements and time-limited food since we ran late, she had to go somewhere else. So, we just had a very productive lunch as we lay out the next few weeks. Negotiations for the year-long omnibus continue forward. Though we're working tirelessly, we need a bit more time beyond this week to get an omnibus done, avoid a needless shutdown. That said, the Senate should be prepared to pass a one-week CR this week and give negotiators more time to finish up. Now, this is a great idea, folks, and it will help people out with stimulus checks. So I definitely believe that it's going to be great if Joe Biden can get this out. We have attended views with the Ford stimulus check, Social Security benefits, SI, and SDI. Continue watching this video because you don't want to miss out on this. Much relief is here, and the lawmakers in the House and the Senate are ready to close in on a deal that's going to give you stimulus checks every single month. It will help those of you on SSI and Social Security. It will help those of you on low income, and even um, if you're not in need of a stimulus check, this bill will help you out still. So Kevin McCarthy is accelerating the long-stalled push for a unified House GOP strategy in Washington's high-stakes debt in Washington's high-stakes debt ceiling stand. His opening offer on a debt limit is riddled with potential political pitfalls, including an expiration date that would tee up another high-stakes fiscal fight just before the presidential election. Kevin McCarthy plans to present a menu of debt limit options in person when Congress returns. This includes several types of massive spending cuts, stricter rules for the government's social programs, and new energy policies. The LCGP has a limited time to come together with only four votes to spare, as it eyes a vote by late May.
The party's list of potential demands, which also includes an across-the-board cut to discretionary spending and strict work requirements like food stamps, is likely to change as the House Republicans hash out a former bill in the coming weeks. They're also proposing to raise the debt limit for just one year, triggering another battle over the federal purse in the middle of the presidential primaries. This includes two months of discussion with six to ten lawmakers at a time. The stakes couldn't be higher for Kevin McCarthy. This Republican must avoid a misstep that would weaken his speakership, which any single frustrated member could voice a vote to terminate. And unlike other GOP items, which satisfy the party base, there are slim chances of any becoming law. Any debt ceiling limit is disliked by the Republican Party. Now, the New Mexico governor has recently announced a bill that the state will be sending out the newest round of $500 rebates in mid-June. The state taxation and revenue department will send rebates of $500 to single filers and $1,000 to married people. This is for heads of households. Any New Mexico resident who filed a 2021 New Mexico personal income tax turn and is not declared as dependent on the person's taxpayer refund will receive the rebates automatically. It's also important to remember that there is no application to receive rebates. The governor told reporters today that there are prices for basic necessities continuing to be high across the nation and our state is in a fantastic financial position. And it's important to me that New Mexico's families are sharing in that success. Taxpayers who received the refund by direct deposit on their return will receive the rebate by direct deposit as well. All others will get a check in the mail and direct deposits will be mailed and distributed first and checks will be mailed over the few weeks. Now, eligible New Mexico residents have until next year to get this money. So benefits by raising the age of people, members are writing the bill against the backdrop of extraordinary uncertainty in the economy, inflation, including the cost of food is so high that the Federal Reserve is willing to risk a recession to slow the prices down. Economic economic disruptions are causing by the crisis in the robust labor market is expected to weaken in the months ahead. The past week, Democrats of the Department of Education announced that it will begin discharging student loan debts for borrowers who've been in repayment for 20 to 25 years under a one-time payment. Around 800,000 borrowers will benefit from this, and there will be $39 billion dropped. Joe Biden said the previous announcement is a one-time adjustment and will become an even more important lifeline for struggling borrowers than repayments start in September. The one-time payment adjustment that you can... Everybody, don't waste time and get the stimulus check that you need. Hundreds of thousands of families in North Carolina could get another check from the state. North Carolina is receiving about $5.7 billion from the latest stimulus package. Governor Cooper wants to use that money for another round of extra credit grants. Last year, those checks went to families with kids to help with the cost of remote learning and homeschooling. The difference this time is they're using income limits. We decided we would propose an income limit because... We have a time to use about the fourth stimulus check.